Hey everyone, welcome back to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay, so grab a brush, grab some miniatures and some brushes, and paint along with me. Let's rid our worlds of unpainted models and have a great time doing it. Uh, today I'm going to keep working on the guys from last week. I unfortunately didn't have a lot of time this week spare to work on some paintings and models from our friend. So I'll be working on the same Retribution Cyrog guys as last week. I've made a little progress, just a little bit since last week, but uh, yeah, I'll keep working on them, having a great time, discuss my week. Yeah, let's talk. Yes. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back. So, uh, as you can see, I'm working on the same guys as last week. I've got the greens done, and the flesh are done, the gold is done, and I'm starting on the metallics, the silvers. I've done a couple of them already, like this guy. As you can see, they're on their webbed on the eyes and stuff. They're gonna look good. And oh, I did the black for the boots. So, a few more colors, they'll be done. I'll probably be done them probably another hour after this video. But that's okay. They're getting done, and that's what matters. And the best part is, it's not even for me. It's for my friend. Sorry, I got the bit of the sniffles. I've been sick for the last week. I get sick this time of year, usually. Whenever it keeps jumping between hot and cold, I always get sick. I don't know. But that's okay. So I apologize. You might hear a lot of sniffling today, but I will uh, I'll try, to, try to keep it under wraps. You know, I'll Try to keep it to a minimum. Yeah. So let's start by talking about the weather. Why not? The most awkward topic ever. Let's talk about the weather because it's going to be an interesting winter, I think, this year. So today is uh, today's Wednesday. I'm filming this a day ahead of time because tomorrow I will be at work pretty much the whole day. So uh, this will probably be up on Thursday sometime, I'm guessing, by Thursday night or something. But I'll be busy for most of the day. And so, uh, yeah, like it's December 1st now. Well, I guess December 2nd? Yeah, I don't know. It's December, either way. And it is still, like, in the pluses here in Canada, where I am. And apparently it's going to be a mild winter, and I'm okay with that. You know, it, it don't, I don't think it's a sign of global warming, or, you know, because obviously there's fluctuations in temperature each year. Some years are hotter, some years are colder, some years have more snow, etc. But uh, I'm okay with that. I would like to keep riding my motorcycle. I rode my motorcycle yesterday, 1st of December. I always love to ride my motorcycle as much as possible. And... Uh, so that was cool. So I like the weather so far. It's been good. And yeah, it's been good. It's been a fun so far. And I'm hoping that apparently it's going to be a mild winter, which if that happens, I'm okay with that, you know, and, but apparently it's going to be a, a not a nasty February or something like that, but it happens. You know, if you live in Canada, you really can't be like, I hate snow and live in Canada or even a lot of places in the States, right? Cause you get, you get snow. And you can't be like, I don't like snow. Well, then don't live here. Move to Vancouver. Because Vancouver has no snow. It just rains. A lot. A lot of rain. So right now I'm just taking some uh, pig iron, which is the equivalent of um, lead belcher from P3. And I'm just, uh, it's on my palette, and I'm just painting all the silver areas on these models. As I said, there's some elf guys for my friend. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be playing with against my friend Andy, but I don't know if he's going to be coming down sometime during the holidays. But if he is, I'm hoping he's going to be happy with all these models I've been painting for him. And I've actually painted a couple of my Signar lately. Um, so next battle report, I think we're going to have a good time because there's going to be a bunch of new models on the table for both armies that are painted. And I love painted armies. Now, to be fair, now I will admit this ahead of time. I've been talking with my... Um, tonight I had a message from, from Dave, my, my friend Dave, and who plays against me a lot. And he's going to play, he's learning Skatari right now. He's just started Skatari. And we're going to have a battle report. Uh, he wanted to do it tomorrow, but I won't be able to. So uh, probably, hopefully next week. I think a car just crashed somewhere. Um, and he'll be having an unpainted army. I'm okay with that. Like I'll play against an unpainted army for battle reports if need be. I obviously prefer painted armies because they look so much better. But uh, in this cir circumstance, obviously, you guys know Dave lo loves to play with painted armies typically, but it's a new army and he doesn't have time to paint it up before next week and stuff. So, And he really wants to play Skatari. And I, I'm very curious about Skatari. I've never faced them. So I'd love to see what they can do. The only downside, though, is um, I don't know what army I'm going to face them because I don't really know Skatari amazingly well. I did a codex review on it. I should just bone up on my codex review. And uh, see, 
and bring an army that'll be a good matchup for. Not by good matchup, I don't mean a rock to his scissors. I mean uh, that we'll have a great fun game and see what they're capable of without being too overpowered or too underpowered. You know, if I brought, excuse me, like if I if I knew exactly what they could do and I brought the exact anti of it, that would destroy it. We wouldn't really get to see in a in a fun way what Skitari can do, right? And if I brought an army that's too weak against it, it'll be just like, and Skitari punched them in the face, kind of thing. So, it was like years ago when I, I used to work for Mini Wargaming. Um, Owen and I, for, for when the Space Marine Codex came out, there was a Space Marine Week at Mini Wargaming. And the very first battle report, now it was hated for a different reason. Well, one of the different reasons. But, uh, because I screwed up on the audio track. But uh, for this battle report, we wanted to see how Tyranids would fare against the new White Scars, the new bike list from White Scars, right? And we pretty much, uh, Tyranids got tabled turn two? Pretty sure it was a turn two tabling. So, oops. That's, you know, not the most watched, loved battle report, because it's not very interesting, right? It's just one team picking on the other one for one turn, and they're like, done, good game. So. Yeah, wasn't the most interesting one that we filmed. Weather's, yeah, good, I'm happy about it. It doesn't have to snow very much. I'm, I'm okay with that. It doesn't snow terribly, you know, a lot. These guys are coming along well. And as they'll be done this week, and the next week I'll hopefully start the next batch. There's a 10 guys next I want to start. Now, these guys are going to need some TLC beforehand. They're really in ugly shape. To be honest, they're really in ugly shape. So I'm going to have to work quasi hard on them to get them into good painting shape before I even paint them. I'm going to wash them, rebase one. Yeah. But that's okay. It happens. By the way, people, of course, uh, commercial, I must put this in. Um, please, if you would love to keep supporting my videos, um, please consider joining the Warp or supporting my Patreon campaign because either of them will keep my work alive. And I, yeah, basically, I'm not going to talk about it too much in detail today. But um, I, I mentioned a few months ago that... If I didn't get the support from the community by a certain time, I would have to cut back significantly on my videos. And that date is, it, it wasn't an empty threat. The date is approaching in not in the foreseeable future. And unfortunately, if I don't get, if I'm getting, you know, the same amount of support I am now, I don't know if I'll be able to continue making videos frequently at all. And it really sucks be honest. The reason why I want to talk about this is I really just want to bring it up. I'm, I'm tired of hiding it. You know? And I love making videos and I would love to do it for free all the time. But uh, I can't. It takes too much time in a week and I have too many bills that need paid. So please consider joining the Warp. It's only you know, ends up being like $5 a month if you do a yearly subscription. Or if you want, really want to join the warp, but you don't have a lot of the funds, talk to, contact me at j at jadedproductions.com and maybe we can work out a better price, you know? Because, yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not greedy. I'm not a, you know, Scrooge McDuck or Scrooge McDuck. So, please. You know, that's, that's two easy ways of supporting my videos and keeping them going because I can't, unfortunately, dedicate as much time in the near future as I would love to. You know, my original goal was to eventually quit my other job and in the fall, it's still fall, I guess, technically, so in the fall, I had to increase my hours on my other job just to keep going. And I've still, I, I work more now than I did in the beginning of September, so it's been pretty, it's been pretty busy. And that's why, obviously, I haven't been able to get these guys done. My goal is to get them done uh, over the last week, but uh, it just couldn't happen because I was just busy working. You know, 
and I'm gonna keep fighting. I'm gonna I'm not going down without a fight. I'm gonna keep working hard on my videos, and I'm getting things back into gear. Like uh, hopefully this week, this week should have a how to play 40k, and last week had a Q and J, and obviously painting with J. I don't have any battle reports currently filmed. It was unfortunate that I couldn't film one tomorrow with Dave because then I would have put it up. So maybe if I film it next week with Dave, it'll put up, go up the week after. What else? Yeah, I got sick. And I've been sick for the last week, about on and off. You know. But uh, that happens. I'm not too upset. You know. Whenever I get sick, I always have that internal debate of whether or not I should call in sick for work. Because... Um, Here's my argument, and I always, I always debate about this. If I call in sick, the problem with my staff is that we're really low on staff members, and that one person calling in sick ruins the day a lot of the time, right? It's one of those jobs. Not a lot of people. And uh, so you need your staff members, right? It's important. But if you go in sick, you bring the germs to the other coworkers, possibly risking getting everyone sick, Right? Now, probably knowing me, I got sick probably from a coworker or something, but. Uh, I need to change brushes for this guy's glasses. So, yeah, I was debate between whether or not I should actually call him sick, because one hurts the staff and the other one potentially hurts the staff. But it's just a cold, but still, that's the things that spread the quickest, right, and the easiest. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And obviously I work for myself, so I can't call in sick here. But, uh, sorry, I might just have to blow my nose in a second and then maybe that'll stop the sniffles. And after this color, if I finish the metallics, which I should be able to finish the silvers, at least with the, the wash stage, like hit it with a wash after this, then I'll start on the leather areas. These guys. There aren't that many more colors left. But, um... Yeah, they're coming along. I'll definitely have these guys done this week. Of course, it's almost the end of the week anyway, right? By the time this video goes up, it'll be probably Thursday. Thursday night, I'm guessing. It'll go up. And another week over. These weeks just fly by. This year has flown by. It's been a, such an awesome year. But it has flown by. You know, I faced I met several opponents in battle reports. It was a lot of fun. Worked my butt off. I did the math. I've done over 500 new videos. And I'm, when I'm in new videos, I mean, I like technically did more than 500, but like the warp got a six month preview over the free content for the uh, Miniature Painting 101. So I'm only clowning each Miniature Painting 101 video once, right? As opposed to two videos, one for the warp and then one for free. I did over well over 500 videos this year. That's between my two channels. That's pretty good. So I'm averaging, you know, 10 a week. Over the whole year, I was a busy bee. Hmm. I think that's it for him. Oh yeah, the sword. This week's painting tutorial is a stormwall, a Signar stormwall. Uh, I painted Nemo a couple weeks ago, and I was like, I really want to paint my stormwall, so I did for. a Miniature painting, uh, no, miniature painting one, a uh, painting tutorial. He was a lot of fun to paint up. I'll show him to you in a second. I'm still, his basing is drying right now.
else. Yeah, not a lot happened this week. Apparently the Toronto Zoo is having a civil monkey war. I call it civil monkey war. And it's actually happened. It's like I've, I've worked with mon- with baboons in captivity. Years ago I was a zookeeper. And uh, it happens with groups that have, that have hierarchies. Occasionally, um, if the alpha male dies or the alpha female dies, um, or if some one of the betas just want to overthrow the government of the monkeys, they have a civil monkey war. And they're brutal. Like, I mean, they're really brutal fightings. <laughs> so I'm just going to blow my nose quickly. I apologize if it's loud, but... Uh, So, yeah, the Toronto Zoo is having a civil monkey war. And it's not what you can do. You can try to just, the key is kind of let it play out. So they had to close the monkey pavilion. But it wasn't before people filmed it. And it's it's really vicious because they fight, like almost to the death, basically. They'll kill each other for the civil monkey war. And years ago, the zoo I was working at, the monkeys wouldn't go in at night. Because the Civil Monkey War. I don't know if you've ever heard the term Civil Monkey War enough than as this video, but, uh, yeah. So, they wouldn't go inside. Not at the end of the night. So, for, for weeks, about two weeks in a row, we had to have a zookeeper there. 24-7. To watch the monkeys. And we, uh, it was with Savannah Baboons, when I used to work with my zoo. Or, you know, the zoo I used to work at. And, yeah, what happened with ours was the beta males just tried to overthrow the alpha. Like, he was still alive and doing well. His name was Doc, because he looked like Doc from uh, Seven Dwarfs, Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. Unfortunately, not from Back to the Future. He was a chubby little thing with a giant beard. And they tried to overthrow him. Apparently, at the Toronto Zoo recently... um, one of the alpha, the alpha female died, and that's what causes it, right? And they can kind of see this is coming. They, the zookeepers knew there's a potential for this, because of obviously the um, the herd, the, you know, the group behavior. And when one, when the leader dies, it's a battle to see who becomes the new leader. So they kind of saw it was coming, and they, I don't know why they didn't close the pavilion ahead of time. Maybe they were just monitoring it, and then the civil monkey war started. So, but yeah, so civil monkey wars, they're real. Uh, that's something that actually happens in real life. I've witnessed it once with lions, and I've witnessed it once with monkeys. Both, of course, make sense, because they're both, you know, group animals with one leader. So, it happens in captivity. What else? There have been a lot of posts. I'm part of a couple Facebook groups. Lately. And this week, there was an interesting discussion on a couple times on the, the Facebook posts. And uh, one of them was kind of, it started out being about, just a sec, I'm getting a phone call. 18. Sorry, my wife was calling. Can't ignore that phone call. Um, so it, it was, it made the news this week. Mini Warrior even put up a video, I think on Monday. And Leland left Mini War Even. I'm not going to go into any details. I have no idea why he left. No idea whatsoever. So I'm not going to go into it at all. But somebody in my face in my Facebook group uh, for Peterborough, you know, mentioned that, and then it became kind of a talking about various YouTube channels. It became a critique of them, and I don't mind. I take criticism well. You know, I, I, I prefer it when it's more constructively put together. You know, but it kind of, at one point, my channel was being discussed, and so focus on this, let me see, yeah, it is, so, and then I, so I got some feedback on stuff, and some of it was good, so I'll probably take it into consideration for future videos, uh, specifically about my battle reports. So, I do like criticism. I don't mind criticism, constructive criticism. I'm trying to make the best product possible. 
but I do want to make it my way as well, you know? Yeah, but uh, I definitely want to make good videos. Oh, man. Yeah. What else? Black Friday was last week. I didn't end up buying it. I didn't buy anything. I didn't go shopping. I didn't... I had my tires put on. But uh, I didn't buy anything. So that's my question to you guys. One of my questions this week. Did you go Black Friday shopping? And was it crazy? Like the videos that always end up on YouTube. I'm pretty sure half the people go to Black Friday shopping for buying the products. And then the other half go to just film the people buying the products. You know, people go just for their self. Like you watch the videos... And usually it's like three people fighting, surrounded by ten people with their cell phones. And I wonder if people just go with the sole purpose of trying to catch someone doing something rude or violent on uh, Black Friday. And then they go like, YouTube, and then they get a million views, and it's cool. You know, they get a few thousand bucks for watching someone beat up someone over a TV. So, Black Friday deals in Canada really aren't, like, pretty much aren't worth fighting for anyway. Especially with the fact that most people, like, it's getting to the point now where very few things are actually fight overable for crazy prices. Most people have a flat screen TV these days. They haven't made non-flat screen TVs in a long time. You know, everyone has an iPhone, iPod, something. So, I won't, I don't know. But, uh... So, that's my question to you guys. Were, was anybody here Black Friday shopping? And was anybody here painting with me? Was anybody at like one of the crazy places in the States where people attacked each other for a TV or for a random product? Like I watched a video of a woman stealing from a little kid. Like, she grabs a, a package out of a little kid's hand. hand? I was going to say head for a second. Right? Like, grabs it right out of the kid's hand. And then, when the mom defends the kid, the woman's like, What are you doing? Why are you oppressing me? I'm so confused. Like they're like, what? You clearly just stole from a little kid. Crazy woman. You know. Looking good. Yeah. I don't know. I would never do that. I don't care about products that extremely. You know? They're just material items. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. But whatever. <sighs> yeah, this Christmas, I've already started my Christmas shopping, of course. I'm going to try to get it done in the next week or so. Maybe by next week, I'll, have, I'll in my video, I'll discuss how I've finished. Or that I'm still trying to finish. We'll see. Because... Uh, I would love to finish my Christmas shopping sooner than later. But of course, I probably work the next like five days straight anyway, so. We'll see. I'm still trying to figure out, iron out the last details of my Christmas plans. Um, unfortunately, that's a, you know, it's, it's compromise. As I said last week, you got to compromise if you're a married couple or in a relationship or, you know. And I hope my family actually realizes that eventually, that I have to compromise. And that my wife's family deserves a, time, a day with us on Christmas Day for once. Right? I'm pretty easygoing with most things. I'm a pretty fair person. And I understand that. You know, like, they have not had us for years on Christmas Day, so they deserve. So... I think the title has to. The title of this video has to involve somehow civil monkey war. What else happened of interesting? Uh, tonight it was announced. No, yesterday it was announced that the Blue Jays' best pitcher, like arguably the best, one of the best pitchers in the league, we had David Price. We just got him for, for half a season. He was a rental player, but everyone was praying and and hoping and wishing that he would stay with the Blue Jays. Instead, he went to the rival, basically Blue Jays' rivals, 
the Boston Red Sox, right? Because they're we play the Boston Red Sox more than pretty much any other team that we play. And so now we'll be facing David Price for the next seven years. But the crazy part is, this dude is getting paid. He's the highest salary ever of a pitcher. Ever. Uh, in a contract. Ever. So this guy is getting paid $31 million American. Right? $31 million American for the next seven years. Every year. So basically, in... Every 10 days in the States, now it's every like eight days in Canada, he makes a million bucks. So every 10 days on average, he's a million dollars richer for the next seven years. That's nuts. You know, that's pretty nuts. I don't have ambitions of becoming that rich ever. I'd be happy with making like minimum wage through all my videos and then being able to quit my other job, but... It's crazy. Professional sports, man. They get paid. If you're the best, you get a lot of money. The thing is that kind of weird, that's weird to me, is that a lot of sports have salary caps, and that makes sense, because then teams can't just buy championships, right? Or buy the best players. Like, NHL has a salary cap. Uh, I believe the NBA does. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the NBA does. And But baseball doesn't. So teams can just be like, we have money. We buy everyone. Like the New York Yankees, they just basically buy themselves championships every, you know. They can do well any year because they just pay money for everyone. And that's kind of unfair, you know. Because, yeah, it just, it, teams should have relatively, like, similar pay levels. Otherwise, teams buy championships. And it, it just ruins the league, right? It's great if you're in that team. Or you're a fan in that city, but uh, overall, it's it's kind of unfair. And then I read an interesting article. Apparently, people are trying to get in the states. Uh, just this was a thought, uh, because baseball is now well into November, right? It's it's now until the second week of November, um, and then lately they've been having weather problems, depending on which team makes it in. Now Toronto obviously has a heated indoor stadium the Rogers Center slash Skydome, depending on when you are a fan. And apparently a garbage truck's coming by. Um, and but pe people are petitioning in the States in certain groups to just make it like uh, the Ro not the Rose Bowl, the Super Bowl. Not su is it Super Bowl? I could be wrong. Super Bowl in the States or the All-Star Game? Might be the Pro Bowl might be the Pro Bowl in the States, that only happens in warm climate areas. And I would really hate that if that happened. Because Jays, A, have an inside state, and like the, the list of teams that they feel that they should balance between. It's all, you know, Southern United States teams. And you know what? If, if a Canadian, if the Toronto Blue Jays ever make it to the World Series, they deserve to have a, a game at the, Sky, at the Rogers Center. They do, because it's been years. You know, and to deny them that would be really rude. Really rude. So. I don't think it'll ever happen. Because it would, it would destroy it. Like, yeah, it would just be so rude to have, force Canadians to go there. I guess ruder things have happened, but They're looking good. This guy's, yeah. This is number six of eight. And we're about 30 minutes in. So I'll definitely be able to finish up the 
silver. And my wife's calling again. And I'm back. <laughs> so this is how I'll definitely be able to finish these guys, the silver, and then I'll work on the leather probably afterwards. None. I don't have to do the arrows. Hope I get better soon. It's okay. Cool. Maybe I'll get some more machine games in the near future. Maybe not. Oh yeah, there's been interesting discussions. Another thing on about Facebook. Um, there was an interesting discussion that I'm going to chime in soon on. But, but it's about airbrushing. A lot of people in my local area are, are thinking about getting into airbrushing. Now, some of you may know, I like to airbrush a lot. Like I do a lot of airbrushing. Most of my storm wall for this week's painting tutorial was airbrushed. You know, because they're awesome. They save a lot of time. They prevent brush strokes. They make great blending. You know, they're just great. So I'm thinking, well, other than chiming in, I'm thinking maybe I should start, like, I don't I don't think they would be paid for. I don't think I'll, I'll I'd ever charge people. But if I have a little bit of time, I think it'd be a nice gesture to just show people some stuff about airbrushing. You know, like I have, like um, my homie Stu is considering getting into an airbrush. He's in this, he's in this group talking about airbrushes, and I just need more paint on my palette. You know, so. Yeah, so I'm wondering, maybe I should be a nice guy and just uh, have some people over one at a time and just to show them the basics of airbrushing and, you know, a general versus a fine detail airbrush. Show them a feel of it. So that way they can make a better guess of whether or not they actually want to get into airbrushing. 
you know, especially someone like Stu who has, uh, I'm betting he has a lot of paint, unpainted Imperial Guard, or maybe painted Imperial Guard, but uh, I know he has a lot of Imperial Guard. Imperial Guard is one of the best armies for an airbrush because the tanks, it'll save you a lot of time. So, I might do that. I'm thinking I might do that if I have some, just a few, you know, a couple hours to spare one day. Having, I'm just showing them no pressure, what company or anything. I prefer Badger, but if they don't, no problem. But just to show them the airbrushes, you know, and what a good airbrush feels like in your hand, the basics, and just show them how to, to do some quick stuff. That way they can actually gauge for themselves if um, they really want to get into it. You know? That might be cool. We'll see. I don't know, I feel weird charging people. I don't think I'm at that level of chart. I'm that gifted in the airbrush field or painting that I would charge people for lessons. You know? Because with, obviously if you charge people, there's pressure to actually, I guess, to teach well, but, uh, I don't know. There is a class at, uh, I got contacted about this and I don't, I guess they just didn't see the instructor's name, but it's not by me. There's a class actually called Miniature Painting 101 at uh, Adepticon. They were wondering if I was the instructor, and I'm not. It's actually Oasis Rising, Michelle. So, that'll be good. And no, I'm not going to sue her for the name. I don't have a copyright on Miniature Painting 101. I did think that was funny that someone thought I was teaching it, because of just the name was Miniature Painting 101. So... That makes sense, though, I guess. If you typed in, like, Miniature Painting 101 on Google, uh, it would be... You'd probably come up with a lot of my stuff, right? Because Google owns YouTube. And I'm a lot, I have, like, 180-something videos on YouTube of Miniature Painting 101 for the free content. And for the paid, I have the extra... You know, I think we're at 113 right now. This week was uh, Red Orc Flesh. The last couple weeks, people wanted me to show to paint, paint blue orcs and red orcs. So, the red orc flesh, where is he? He's right on somewhere. Here is he. Here he is. I like him. He's pretty red. No, oh, sorry, it's not really focused in, but. Yeah, that's him. So. If I was wondering, I'll just move the camera for just a second here. Wrong way. He's just drying, the basing stuff is drying. This is this week's painting tutorial. Uh, my Stormwall, uh, my Signar Stormwall. So he was fun to paint up. Not a lot of colors on him, actually. I only painted like six or seven colors, but he was really cool. I love the way he turned out. So uh, if you want to see how he's done, he'll be this week's painting tutorial in the warp. Probably put up tomorrow. So, slash maybe the same day as this video, slash today, depending on when you're watching it. I don't think I'll be able to get it up tonight, so. Probably be up Thursday night for this video. But he was really cool. I'm, I really like, is it airbrushing? You know, it's all this gradient of color. Airbrush. So, good stuff there. Nice airbrushing. I don't know why I turned it off again. I'm being silly. So let's zoom back in. I have one more guy to do the silvers on. So let's... Just get back to where I want it to be. More trailers came out this week for some movies that are obviously... Like, that was the core being turned on. This is awesome, hilarious. I just keep killing the camera. But um, some trailers came out this week for some nerdy movies that are coming out soon. Like Nerds are in such heaven right now because Batman vs. Superman had a new trailer this week. And it's pretty awesome. Shows that there's actually a lot of animosity. And it finally showed Doomsday. 
My guess is Superman's gonna die, but I could be wrong. And uh, my favorite line is from the trailer uh, when they when it first reveal um, Wonder Woman. Batman's like, "She with you?" He goes, "Superman goes, I thought she was with you." I thought that was cool. And uh, so that's gonna be cool. Wonder Woman, of course, in it, and. The other one, new Star Wars movie. Of course, the the movie comes out in like two weeks, right? But uh, two weeks from Friday, right? The eighteenth. Um, but I think it's gonna be really good. There's a lot of pressure on this movie, but I think it's gonna deliver. I really do. I think it's gonna be a good movie. I think Star Wars is gonna be amazing. So I don't think I'm gonna see it opening night. Because um, it's going to be crazy busy. I'll probably see it maybe opening weekend. Maybe I'll see it opening weekend. That'll be my goal. If I have the time, opening weekend. I grew a beard recently. No particular reason. It's just cold. Wanted to wanted a change, so um, maybe I'll keep it for a while, maybe not. We'll see. No real plans as of yet. I've gotten several messages from it from my bearded community. I know Josh sent me a message about a nice beard and I think Patrick Dubois as well. So I respect that. They have good beards. Civil monkey war. <laughs> what else? Um my wife was watching Cartoon Network the other day. Speaking of monkeys, this just reminded me of it. And there's a show on Cartoon Network called, um, what's it called? Space Monkeys. And I watched it for like 10 minutes. And that show is hilarious, but extremely vulgar. And I can't believe like that show is still on a child network. Like these days, you know, children's shows from when I was a kid or even growing up wouldn't fly in today's society. Like Ren and Stimpy? No way. No way. Um, it wouldn't fly at all. And then on top of that, like, even Sesame Street from the uh, late 70s. Yeah, like, um, Sesame Street, for example, when they decided a, couple, a few years ago to re-release old episodes of Sesame Street. This is a funny story that you may appreciate. Um, I just dropped my palette. It's okay. So when they decided to re-release old episodes of Sesame Street, they um, they had to get them first, they had to get them uh, rated by the rating people. And when they did, it was really funny that the show, Sesame Street from the 70s and, and 80s, was not rated PG. It actually got rated PG-13. So, it was not recommended for children under the age of 13. And this is Sesame Street. And it just shows that the what has been allowed in children's shows um, has greatly changed over the last, you know, 20 years. Children's shows used to be pretty, can be pretty dark at times, you know? Yeah, so, that was kind of weird. Maybe it shows a society we're getting more sensitive. Maybe we're getting overly sensitive, I don't know. That's for some people to debate. Maybe I, I probably won't be able to finish what I thought I would accomplish. At least I got the silvers done in this video. Uh, I think we're about 40 minutes because I've had to end the takes several times. So I'll probably do the shade here and then call it a day. And then do the, uh, the leathers uh, tomorrow or something when I have a little bit of free time. 
I gotta get ready soon and go to my other job. Yep. How it happens. And I just gotta find my non oil. I had it like 10 seconds ago. And then I lost it. I set aside, I do what I do is, there it is. I set aside all the paints I'm gonna be using today. And that way there's not a lot of looking. I hate, you know, having to forge for my paints that uh, I'm using, so. Another weird thing is, I guess because debit charges a fee. Now, I'm guessing debit charges a fee per transaction to companies who use them. That's my guess. Because it's weird now because there's actual commercials. Unless it's maybe run by like an anti-debt company or something. But there's actual commercials now these days. Anti-credit card commercials. They're like, you know, what would you like to use today to pay for your gift? And then the girl's like, credit card. And then everyone's like, debt, 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 debt. And she's like, oh, I don't want to be in debt. I better use my debit. Now, for those who don't know debit, uh, I guess it's called debit everywhere else, but uh, Interac, you know, bank card payments. And uh, that's weird. I'm like, it's it's weird seeing a commercial for a, an item that you most people use on a daily basis anyway. It's kind of, you know, it's like, I don't ever understand toilet paper commercials. It's... Most people buy toilet paper. When they do, it's usually whatever's on sale. You know, it's not an item that people are like, ooh, those kittens in the commercial did look extra cute. I should purchase this particular bathroom tissue. No. It's, it's toilet paper, you know? Like, it's an item that sells itself because people need it. You know? Uh, there was an interesting, like... I who said it. I think it was Steve Jobs. Somebody said it. They were like, commercials are only for products that can't, se that can't sell themselves. You know? If you have a product that is so amazing that it sells itself, you really don't have to have commercials. Like, so many... How often do you see commercials for Apple computers? Right? And I know there are some. Like, there used to be, I'm a Mac, I'm a PC. But then they stopped them because they kind of realized that people who are going to buy them rarely... They didn't, it didn't affect them that that commercial, it was just, people wanted to buy Macs, would buy Macs, Mackies, you know? So, it's useless money that they're spending on commercials when they really don't need to. Yeah. So as I said, it was an interesting week, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to take the criticism the that I got in that Facebook page, I'm gonna take it to, to the heart and see if I can improve my videos with it. I really am, and I appreciate people talking about it. Now the tone, wasn't the nicest for one of the posts, but I'm not going to be rude about it or anything. Or, you know, I don't care. So, but that's it. You know, I try to keep my videos as good as I can. And that's it. Like I put out. I'm going to probably start a new season. I'm thinking in the new year I'm going to re reset the season for like battle reports and have like season two. Because I'm at like episode. I forget where I'm at. Like seventies, I think right now. That's time for a new season. Why not? But you can see they're they're coming along. After the silvers, um, it's just gonna be the leather, and then doing. Um, what I do is I intentionally like the blue looks really flat right now because my last step that I do is a highlight color of the armor. And it's intentional to clean up the spots that, that interact, you know, that intercept it with the blues, because then I can use them to clean up mistakes if I made them and highlight at the exact same time. It's kind of what I call my cleanup color. So I do that last, and then uh, these guys will be pretty much done after that, and I think my friend will be happy. I don't charge very much for these commissions, because I don't like mixing business and pleasure. I really don't. And my friend's been such a good friend to me over the years that it's, I don't, I don't want to, you know, 
I don't mind this time, especially when I can combine it with a painting with Jay. You know, what we do for friends, we don't need to charge for. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, if it's the same logic as, as if I do like a seminar or like just have a friend over for a couple hours and teach him about airbrushing, because friends don't need to charge friends because friends are there for friends. You know what I'm saying? Like it's. It's not all about the money, and I do apologize if sometimes I come across as only about the money, which is not true. I just am trying, I'm fighting for the survival of my channel. And unfortunately, money is what drives, what makes these channels go round, right? It's, we need money. But I don't, I wouldn't ever unnecessarily bring money into the equation, you know? I don't, I would, I do a lot of stuff for free for my friends, and when I, when they insist on paying, I always, um, give the most polite rate or answer as possible. You know, I don't like mixing businesses and pleasure. No. So. Uh, this week's face-off episode in the warp. I've been doing face-off lately. This week's face-off episode was hilarious. It was Azrael versus Castell and Crow. It was one of the like the the longest face-off episodes ever that didn't involve any wounds. Like it was so funny. It was like round after round after round after round of no one hurting each other. The reason being is uh, Castell and Crow. Only gets three attacks base. He hits on threes and wounds on fours. Unless he casts Hammerhand, then he wounds on twos. So with three attacks, statistically two would hit and then one wound. And then Azrael would get a four up invulnerable save with feel no pain. So the number of times it's expected that you need to do like three round, four rounds of combat to get one wound on Azrael. Versus Azrael hitting back on Castell and Crow. Uh, Azrael gets four attacks, hitting on fours, wounding on twos, but it's only an AP3 weapon. And in challenges, which is what we, the rules we play for face-off, uh, Castell and Crow has a two-up re-rollable armor save if you don't go through his armor. Otherwise, he's a four-up invulnerable save. And then, uh, so it's a two-up re-rollable. So the two of them were just not hurting each other. It was really funny. And that's it. So we got the, uh, the silvers done today. Took a little bit of time, but it was good. It's worth it. Now I'll just do the leathers in the meantime before this next week. Uh, do maybe a highlight color of the green, highlight color of the blue. And uh, they're good to go. And my friend is going to be happy. So let's end now. So that concludes another Painting with Jay. I really hope you enjoyed this today's topic about Civil Monkey Wars. I like saying it. It's a fun saying to say. Star Wars, Civil Monkey Wars. I like it. And I really hope you got some stuff done. I didn't get as much done as I wanted, but I got stuff done. And that's what matters. It's about the progress, right? You got stuff done, and you have less models to paint this week than last week. That's good stuff. So thank you very much for watching. I apologize for the sniffles, and uh, hopefully next week they'll all be you know, back to normal. I probably will film at least two more this year. I'm thinking probably one for, what today's, today's the, this week ends, the Thursday is the 3rd, or 4th, 3rd. So then it's the 10th, 17th. I'm not filming on the 24th. And then the 31st probably will be like a New Year's Eve episode. So we'll see. So, a few more episodes. So, thank you as always for watching. Stay tuned for more episodes. And please, as I said, go check out the Warp or my Patreon campaign. They both, uh, in the link in the description below, it means a lot. So, thank you as always for watching and painting along with me. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting with me.